My void will consume you, if you ask nicely. Your will is no longer your own. Stay away from them. To us! For the You have let the horde to place without honor. Your petty quarrels only make me stronger. Our world needs us, champion. You got to know we are We cannot let the world fall to darkness. We're already lost. Put your faith in the light, and all is possible. Is it truly righteousness that drives you? No! I wonder. It is seen you have guessed. They are coming for you. This is the whispers of wars. Hello everyone and welcome to Whispers of War show 151. I'm your host Hill and let's jump into how was my week in World of Warcraft. Mostly played in the weekend because time walking and that uh, is really good for leveling I've discovered even when you're doing Shadowlands. Um, so what happened was I was doing the campaign, I decided to do the campaign on the Rogue. And it actually went a lot quicker. I think I said that last week. Uh, it felt like it went a lot quicker. And then Time Walking came and it was Mist of Pandaria. And I quite like the mob dungeons. Um, it gets a little bit tedious when you do the same four dungeons over and over again. Um, but it was fine. <laughs> so I just started doing that. And you only need to do three dungeons really to, to get a level. Which is pretty good. Like it's almost... I wouldn't say double, but it, it maybe it's almost double of what you get if you do a normal Shadowlands uh, dungeon. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do time walking because uh, everyone else was so overgeared that it took, you know, the queue was longer than the actual dungeon. I think I had queues of about 10 to 15 minutes and the runs were like five. <laughs> well, that's a bit, it's about the same. It didn't take that long to finish something. So, you know, in an hour you could crank out almost like, um, I think two levels, at least that's what it felt like for me. And yeah, it just went went really quick and uh, my rogue dinged 60. Uh, I have to admit like the last part of the level, I did not jump into a dungeon. I just thought, you know, it's so little, let's just uh, do one of those um, bonus areas. Uh, I might get some gear then as well. and. I switched, like, at level 58, I switched from doing the main campaign to uh, the Fate, uh, the Threads of Fate part. Um, and it's very interesting to see that if you would have done the entire campaign and then you would have switched, like, immediately after you did the Revendreff, you could already see that um, the reputation, you know, you have to um, help the Shadowlands, those quests for the four areas, and you get a bar of how much percentage you're through. You're already like in in the 67, I think it was, was it 67% in? Something like that. It was near 70 just by doing the campaign and doing those quests. And this, this is without side quests. Um, yeah, so I thought, oh, well, that goes really quick. And you get quite a chunk of experience by completing those bars. So I thought, okay, well, um, if I get tired of time walking, I can just do a few of these things now. Um, but I, of course, I've only done like... A tiny bit of Maldraxxus, so that was like on 30% or something. And nothing for an event there and uh, Arden Wills. So I thought, well, at least I can, I can focus on uh, the Kyrian now. So I went to Bastion, did some of those areas there, and then I, I managed to max that out really quickly. Um, handed that in and I was 60. And I got a nice weapon for it as well. <laughs> so, yeah, she's finally 60. Um, went a lot quicker than I expected doing time walking. Which I'll be doing on the other druid that I have. She is almost 55 now, like only two bars away from 55. So I think if I do a bit more time walking before Wednesday, um, I can probably get her to 60 as well. And I need to figure out <laughs> how to gear up a fresh 60 because I haven't done that in a while. Um, and I'm not for so much for the druid, but for the rogue. So I need to figure out how to get about 200 eye level gear. I guess uh, world quest is a thing. Um, 
I'm not sure if I want to do dungeons with randos, but <laughs> we'll see. I don't think gear and time walking is that great um, for now. So, yeah, I need to look into that, but I don't think it's that great. So, yeah, I am happy that I managed to do that. At least she's 60 now, so... Took me a while because I'm a very slow leveler, uh, and, and but I would definitely say take advantage of time walking if you're not very happy. I mean, anything from one to fifty goes relatively quick if you take your time for it and you really focus on it. But I would say if fifty to sixty is a slog for you and you don't really enjoy the Shadowlands, time walking. <laughs> Make sure that you time it with time walking. So yeah, that's that's it for me for this week. Uh, very happy with that. Um, so, I am going to leave you with an interview I had with Alazari. Just want to make you aware that, again, this was done way before we knew what happened uh, and what was going on with Blizzard and, and the people who worked there. Uh, this was also before the patch. Um, of course, 9.1 patch. <laughs> 9.1.5 is out soon, thank God. Um, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah. So I want you to enjoy the interview. Keep in mind, I don't know what happened, but we had so much bad luck with the recording. I had to, we got kicked out of the recording five times. I tried my best to make it sound um, okay and make it merge fluidly because I had to merge all those separate parts together. But if the sound is sometimes a little bit like tinny, um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's still doable. Um, I don't think it's, it's that bad. But, you know, it, it might not be the quality that you're sometimes used to. So, still, I hope you enjoy it. It's a long interview. And, of course, it's also about diversity and representation in WoW. So, it, it stays, you know, on a very important topic to me. So, I hope you enjoy the interview. And I'll see you on the flip side. And with me today, I'm being joined by another brand new voice, and I'm very, very enthusiastic to uh, to talk to him. Even though we sat there in silence for 30 minutes, <laughs> wondering if, if we had disconnected or not. <laughs> but <Trust me>. luck, <laughs> it's all good. It wouldn't be the first time something like that happens. But I'm so happy that you're here. Welcome, Zari. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's <laughs> having a good day. <laughs> I hope so too. Um, so, how are you? Um, I'm doing great. Um, just got over a head cold, got done some moving, had a little exercise, some meditation today, got a little drink going, feeling good, feeling nice, <laughs> warm day today, so not expecting too much, just a little laid back, relaxed day in the house. That's not a bad way to spend the Saturday, really. That's not a bad way. All right. Well, let's start with you. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do on the internet? Oh, uh, all right. Hello, guys. Um, Let's see. I'm a gamer. Um, I play memes too. I play memes. I play memes. I play memes. I do memes too. Um, I used to be a poet as well, professional spoken word artist. I used to perform across states like Kentucky, Tennessee, Atlanta, all across just performing really in the Black Creative Arts movement. Um, other than that, in my game time, I, I love to play World of Warcraft. Big ESO fan, hell of a big Destiny fan. I will ride that wing until the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> right all there. Um, but yes, yeah, other than that, I pretty much just chill. Don't really, don't really do too much. <laughs> maybe, maybe the honest man's work. That's about it. <laughs> that's fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's fair enough. <laughs> so, uh, I'm very curious because I always, every time I have someone who's quite creative, I always want to know. And I know that you are retired as a poet, but what got you into poetry? Oh, man, it all started. <laughs> you got it, got me started. <laughs> it all started when I was, um, when I was six years old, I went to, I went to an event with my mom. Um, mm -hmm. She took me to this, this is Black Creative Poetry event. It's around the same time where this um where the soul it's this thing called the soul circus used to come around it's a bunch of black entertainers performing doing like circus events for like black people anybody really but you know so um there was uh, a poet there i i forgot her name i was young and dumb i don't remember but i remember her performing so well and it it really captivated me because as a kid um I was, I'm, I'm worse. I suck ass at math. I'm going to just be honest with you. Numbers, 
uh division multiplication don't ask me nothing about numbers i really i really suck ass at it i don't know what else there is to say i failed geometry twice that's an honest opinion but it's okay because i was a hella good reader and i was a hella good writer i mm -hmm. excel through anything of that nature and <clears throat> my middle school in mount pleasant tennessee was a performing arts middle school so i used to do monologues doing plays and stuff when during shows and then eventually i just really got into the performing act and then when I started going to college I put that into spoken word and I started just hanging around campus you know doing spoken word every now and then um, going to events because I used to be a very I used to be a big party promoter <laughs> I used to throw parties a lot a mm -hmm. lot and um, any other time after that I would just do shows and then eventually um, my name had gotten out at the time because I was going by Sensei Decon um, I would just go around to Atlanta, Ben, Kentucky, do stuff in Tennessee, just traveling, performing stuff. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a real thing I, I love and enjoy. And recently I just started like, I started doing it in game. And, it, and it's like, I go to certain like RP events just to hang around, chill with people and stuff like communicate, I like to see what other people like to do with arts. Cause art is art to me, no matter how you do it, no matter how you display it. Mm -hmm. And um, I even did a couple of things in game, and it's it's really nice just to be able to to share just a creative influence on people who are actually willing to like listen with open ears and an open heart. Like it, it's just so dope, man. It's it's really dope. That's so cool. I'm so like I'm almost jealous that I haven't found anything like that on the European uh, RP realms that people do that. That is so incredibly really? cool. I heard I heard that Argent Dawn has a really good I, i've heard good and bad but i heard more good <laughs> that it's like it's a really big creative like rp world there like i've, I've heard a lot of good things about it. compared to warm rest of the Court, it's, <laughs> it's it's banging <laughs> i need to check out arch and i mean that it's my main server but i just don't hear about these events for so I need to i need to do some research i think but yeah no i think that's a really really cool idea um so you said that you, uh, you know, you were a poet. So what made you retire uh, eventually? Oh, uh, man. So when I got out of um, when I got out of when I graduated college, it, it took me a minute because life life has this way of always finding the bad and the good things a lot. So um, I trans I used to live in Kentucky when I went to school. I transferred back to Tennessee to finish out college, finished out strong. I finished. I graduated. I'm happy about that. Graduated mm -hmm. English major, looked me up, I succeeded. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I kind of wanted to just really take a break because in the in the Nashville community, and it's, not, it's not to say that I could have went anywhere. I've I've been to. I used to live in New York, used to work there. Could have been to New York, could have done places. Probably could have went to LA and done things. But like the creative circle in Nashville, the way I it 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 upsets me to the mm. point where it's just like. A lot of places are really being like pushed off, gentrified. We don't really have like a lot of venues and stuff to actually rent out to like have shows. We we try to like we really do, but nine times out of ten we're only able to keep that show going for like at least three months. Three months top before like the the owner of the building or something says we can't do this or the poetry or the people that you know come in and perform they they have to look a certain way they can't say certain things and other things like that so it really just became hard to really just find certain platforms for us to perform mm -hmm. that and most of the and most of the people in the circle is also shady mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm just i tell the truth on it so i just really i really wanted to take a break um I really wanted to get back into gaming. I had a lot of off time. Uh, I currently work from home, so I do I don't do too much in between hiking, going outside, anything like that. So, and then especially since COVID really impacted too, I definitely knew I wasn't going to be anywhere able to perform no time soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I have asthma, so I'm not taking that chance. Mm -hmm. um, so I really just wanted to just take a break. It's you know it, it's nothing. It's nothing bad, a sort of reason. I if I could start it back up, I would easily pick it back up and go right back into it like I never left. But it's one it's not like I didn't grow out of it. I just wanted to just slow down on it. But if, if anybody ever wanted to like see my poetry or, you know, wanted to read it, you can follow my Instagram at um at S E N S E I dot D K O N. 
and just look up some of the stuff that I have there. I, I took down most of my YouTube videos because I hate seeing myself on video. <laughs> I can't do it for too long. So most of the stuff I do, I just put it on social media and stuff when I can. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm curious, and, and yo, this yo. might be a, a little bit out there, but, you know, we had... Uh, at the inauguration of of uh, by uh, your president Biden, mm-hmm. and then of course we saw uh, the poet Amanda Gorman. Mm. How did you feel about that? Her, uh, man, I honestly don't really have the words. <laughs> like I, I really, I really couldn't put to you into perspective of the of the words and how I feel about it because she hit home Mm -hmm. like like on damn everything she hit home and personally i think the world just needs a whole wake-up call right now Mm -hmm. like just not even just for like one subset of people not that at all Mm -hmm. but for like all of us as a whole you know i can i scream black lives matter every day i know what it means when i say it in truth to me you know, it's like saying I'm putting myself above anybody else. It's saying, hey, I matter too. But in mm-hmm. truth be told, at the end of the day, all lives matter too. Like, I'm not trying to say that to be political and against it, but I'm saying, like, we are human beings. So before any form of supernatural nature can come and try to wipe us off the face of this earth, we are going to be the ones to do it for ourselves if mm-hmm. we don't actually try to unite and do something. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> that's that's it all I got to say. <laughs> that almost sounds very poetic as well with how you say it. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought, you know, when I, I saw that, I thought it was a very inspiring um, poem that she gave. And I think especially with what has happened in America and what we've seen, because it, it sounds weird, but for people in Europe who right. might not see everything constantly... I think it was a big wake-up call for a lot of people. So, yeah, it, it, it's been a very uh, troubling awakening. year. Yeah, a rude awakening, I think, for, for the world, but what is happening and what is still going on, really. Um, and that's also why we do this podcast and why, you know, I invite wonderful people like you. I want to know a little bit more about... Yes. Uh, Fuck it to me. <laughs> about you know certain things that World of Warcraft might be improving on all of this. So, in regards to World of Warcraft and and mm-hmm. you know the whole diversity and everything that they did. So, with WoW before Shadowlands, you know there were different skin colors in the game, but right. to say that it was very meager with what was on offer <laughs> is a bit of an understatement. Um, how do you feel? about the customization options, especially for the humans. Let's let's focus mostly on that. Um, with skin color, hair, and, and how they've done this. Are you satisfied with it? Do you feel like it was a long time coming? Or do you, oh, where shit. do you stand with this? And d- please don't hold back. Uh, I, I have mixed fucking... Okay, when I say I have mixed feelings, don't mm-hmm. people don't take me wrong. So, because first of all... <clears throat> The customizations. I'm gonna start on for the humans first. So for the customizations, it's like I'm happy. I'm like mm-hmm. I'm fucking. I'm truly fucking happy and ecstatic that we have some differences in skin tones, hair colors, facial features, things that people can identify with. You know, it's it's as a play. Like, I'm not trying to digress, but it's just. It's really weird because when I grew when I grew up playing a lot of MMOs and RPGs and video games, and of course we all have heard this, we all know what I'm going to say. There's hardly any representation of just a form of me doing it. Granted, I don't count the games where the main character is a specific subset of whatever, but those games do count too at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So when they did the customization, I was really happy about it. Granted some of the some of the damn hairstyles and shit that they did is just like <laughs> i y'all could have it maybe it didn't look like y'all actually asked black people for some advice y'all just google black people hair and just kind of slap that shit on didn't really just take the time to just ask like a lot of these companies that's that's the thing that they like they don't really just truly 
go up to people and ask, hey, can we do this a certain way? Like, there's people that will give damn credit to how you do shit. There's people that will tell you what you're doing and what you're doing wrong. Like, it takes nothing to do that. But I do like the fact that they were able to include, like, a lot of people in there. Some people don't like it, but I, I personally enjoy it. I played through it making a um making a worgen and I was just playing through the hairstyle. <laughs> with the only thing this is just small things that I wish they would still just pay attention to detail to cuz it's like you can give you can put black hair in the game. That's that's easy. All right? You can normally most people do is just put a damn afro in there. Put an mm-hmm. afro, put a fade, you got that. But it's just it looks so damn weird when I have this like nice afro low fade cut or whatever. Then I just got this damn grizzled ass, just long hair chin. Like I don't even know it doesn't even match with my hair color. The texture differences is just off. It's like if you gonna go the mile, go the whole mile. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think what um and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what bothered yep. me a lot with all of this was. Yes, I was happy that there was some diversity because, yay, I could make myself now as well, even though I don't look as Asian as some people think. Right. And then, and then I thought, okay, but <laughs> <laughs> why? Why is this skin color connected to this face? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why does it have to? See, the noses, the fate, the noses oh. are the. I, it, it, in a way, I'm like, okay, so basically, y'all saying all black people have big noses. That's not mm-hmm. true. People have skinny noses. People in the South have big noses. I can testify to that because I live in the <laughs> South. <laughs> but but it's like, I don't... It's like... Uh, it's, <laughs> it's weird because it feels wrong. I see what they're doing, but it just feels like, listen, I don't know why this is locked to this certain style, but I don't like it. And I think y'all should just open it up to just make it free range at that point because everybody has different faces exactly and you know there's so many people who might have really dark skin but are actually from a mixed background and might have like a completely different facial structure exactly. like i don't i don't understand that you're tying things to this this should not be happening um, finish, shouldn't. it's it's really odd to me and it, it frustrated me to no end um the other thing, and I'm always going to play a little bit of devil's advocate with this. I love it. And then, uh, so, you know, I sometimes go to the forums for my own. Uh, I guess it's like an S and M thing because I yeah. like to to read the the cesspool that's going on down there. And of course, you know, the whole drama about uh, blood elves and, <laughs> and uh, Floyd elves having brown skin and dark skin, uh, oh. because to quote some very very interesting human beings. Well, that's that's giving them a lot of credit. Um, who said there are no black elves in fantasy? fantasy. <laughs> what, what? How? When you see that, what goes through your mind? <laughs> Except, for, of course, these people have issues. But uh, well, first thing I want to do is give somebody a rock bottom, maybe a stone cold stunner. Just shake shake the ass up a little bit, you know. Just just pop up at the doorstep. Maybe grab the uh, maybe grab the anime homies, the fantasy homies. Just you know, just run up in the crib right quick, cause a little ruckus. <laughs> but <clears throat> when okay, all right. So first, I'm allude to like the black elves in fantasy. Mm-hmm. So in general terms, he here here's the subset. This is the truth. Here's the subset. It is a fact that you can p- include skin color among different ethnicities, diversities in fantasy and i'm not talking about culture i'm just i'm for now i'm just talking about skin color you could put different skin colors ethnicities everything in fantasy games right Mm -hmm. and then the race of that fantasy character i'm gonna take for example let's take for example just off off the wall some shit um i'm gonna say a wood elf Mm -hmm. wood elf can be various among different shades if anything just because that wood elf has brown skin dark skin does not make the assumption that they have to be portrayed as a black character. They're a wood elf. They need to be portrayed as a wood elf. Just because that wood elf has dark skin, maybe has some afro aristic features, whatever, does not mean they have to be portrayed as a black character. So, like, in the terms of, like, people being upset about black blood elves, first of all, if you're racist, just say that. <laughs> Second of <laughs> all, like, like just, just come clean and be honest. Like, 
I, I understand that you want to keep your game like at least Clint's pure the way it has it. Because I on Blizzard's fair point, they didn't necessarily go with this from the beginning either. They may have mm-hmm. mentioned it somewhere, I think, in the RPG. Mm-hmm. Along that line, that so they have fair tan skin or something like that. But they did, you know, throughout Classic, they didn't really include it like that. So you really could know. You just thought the L's were just really this, this one subset of color. But if there want to be variety of L's in different colors, let them. Let them be. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a fantasy game. There are L's. L's come in all different types of colors. We have the drow, which are pitch black, and they're not even tied to black people. Like, I don't mm-hmm. see why people get upset. They're act, they act like Blizzard just took black people, inserted it into L's, and just changed the whole lore to where it just benefits black people. They didn't even do that. They just included black skin. Like, they didn't even include black like hairstyles and stuff. So I don't understand why people are just being upset about it. Like, you gotta play fantasy games for a living. Like, deal with it. I know, like, well, in all fairness, I've never seen a blood of run around in the real world. So, you know, I don't know what you get your panties in a, in a twist for for real. In exactly. And even I hate to mention it, as crappy as the Warcraft movie is, though I still enjoyed it, but it's, it's crappy. I'm not going to lie about that, but I still enjoyed it. You see the elves there. You know, they had a whole different variety set of elves. They had an Asian elf in there. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, like it's, it's there. It's like it could be portrayed by different people. Just because you have brown skin does not mean that makes you like African-American, African, Afro-Latino, whatever you are. You're an elf. You're an elf. If you're from, if you're a black silver, if you're a black elf from Silver Moon, guess what? You're a black elf from Silver Moon. Like, I don't know what else to tell you, homie. Like, you just got to deal with it. Yeah. No, I I completely agree with you. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's baffling really with with how people immediately feel attacked with with stupid things like it's, that like well why why what does it matter to you? no one is forcing you to play a certain skin color if that's not to your liking you know if you if you want to be like that fine but you don't have to no one is putting a gun to your head and saying you need to play this man that and like i was on twitter when the whole thing blew up and went live and it went really controversial around the same time where they introduced the the leaves for night elves and people were going around calling them gay leaves and stuff i'm mm-hmm. like the night elves are basically the wood elves of world of warcraft they live in the forest the forest is their home that's their place they wear they they live in the damn forest bro <laughs> they live in the forest what do you expect a night elf to just wear gold silver come out looking like some damn timberlands in brooklyn like no bro <laughs> like they live in the forest that's their aesthetic that's what works for them shit like why why do people get upset it's like the it's like when when blizzard does one small thing to just make inclusivity for people a lot of people just get really really upset about it just trying to gatekeep their game saying no you can't pull this in here you can't do that in there the game was never like this well back when my dad played he said that they were no damn black blood elves so there can't be none in here today i'm just like just shut up and play the game <laughs> just it's shut up and play the game. you don't like it go play classic <laughs> Exactly, exactly. You know how I always feel? I feel like people who then threaten, oh, well, I'll I'll stop playing this game that caters to every social justice warrior out there. I'm like, fine, fuck off then. Go away. We don't want you. Yeah, we don't want you here. Like, if if anything, you're making the community a better place by leaving because now we can actually have people who enjoy the game, who actually enjoy making these characters, who enjoy actually possibly inserting a little bit of themselves in the fantasy because they have a little bit of things to identify with in this game. Let them be. Let them be in peace. That, that, that's all it is, bro. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so we mentioned it briefly, but how do you feel about the, the cultural influences that the game has used? For instance, you know, uh, there's a lot of Korean influence for the night elf areas and, and items that they use. And then, of course, you know, there's a lot of uh, Caribbean and Jamaican influences for the trolls. Uh, and even for the for the Zandalari, there's a lot of um, African influences. How do you feel about how Blizzard handles this? Um, okay. So, at first, I was, when I first came into the game, I was a little bit critical. Mm -hmm. I was just just a little bit critical, because I know how most games do when they try to use certain 
use certain creatures, fantasy races, whatever, just to fit a certain like real life stereotype, archetype, or agenda or something like that. So mm-hmm. at first I was inclusive. Why well, like not inclusive? At first I was like hesitant. I was like, ah, I don't know. I, it's it seems a little off that you know these trolls out here just have a whole accent of patois just just speaking or whatever. It, it, at first I thought they were trying to be like funny and trying to be offensive in a way, but mm-hmm. eventually it once I learned and then I learned some of the voice actors too. It it really it just really really grew on me. Like okay. the the whole it now don't get me wrong though there there are some things that might be provided a little offensive to people they might you know they might take offense to certain things but I do appreciate how when at least Blizzard draws inspiration from a certain culture or anything they go all in mm-hmm. they they one hundred percent go all in and they they do the damn thing and they and they don't do it in a way to just try to make it seem like it's offensive or anything they do it to the point where it makes it feels like hey this is purely inspired from something that we learned and thought was very interesting and we wanted to share with you guys and we hope you enjoy it too there may be people who will go all in with this like personally i think mr pandaria is the most beautiful thing ever done Mm -hmm. i i get i get the stereotypes and the bad things heard about it but personally like i i cannot tell a lie that is a Mr. Pandaria had a beautiful fucking story. It is a beautiful fucking place. It is beautiful in all essence. You know, Zandalar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Zandalar captures me from African to Mesoamerican to Mayan, Incan, all types of influences, including with the story. It's beautiful. They get actors who actually, like, my, my big thing is if you're going to do a certain thing, mm-hmm. especially give certain characters a certain accent, be sure to at least appropriate and make sure the actor is of that origin to properly do it. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not, there are white Jamaicans. There are white Jamaicans that are, you know, they're South Africans. You know, I'm, I'm cool with all that, but at least get somebody that's from that area, born there, knows the culture to be able to speak or translate and transform what you're trying to do to influence it in the game. And I think Blizzard has done a good job of that so far. If, I, if I'm wrong, please tell me. But if I'm not, I think I'm good. Yeah, they they did an amazing thing with that. The trolls, mm-hmm. especially. I'm I'm a I'm a I don't know anything about that. I'm a troll advocate. All right, I'm I'm troll until the day I troll and die. <laughs> <laughs> All day. Well, I think as many of my listeners know that is like my favorite race is the trolls um, that's, because that's you know race. they're hot. So it's as simple as that. Uh, I'm a person of very simple mind and I love trolls. So uh, the one thing that I do think is a little bit problematic, I think, with how Blizzard started. And again, you know, interrupt me if you, if you disagree. Yeah. I think, the, you know, they, they built the game on stereotypes to begin with. Yeah, they much. do that. They do, they do do that badly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think, you know, like what I've heard from other people is that the Tauren, as much as I love them, are very problematic with how they yeah. represent native americans yeah, they, yeah it is very i don't <laughs> you know i'm i would have been okay with i could get the certain things that they do within their within their culture within the Torah society and stuff i can i can get the influences from that because you know similar to trolls trolls do voodoo voodoo is a haitian creole you know african mm-hmm. jamaican you know that's the thing too so i get small subsets of that what I don't get is, you know, the, it's the naming convention for me that mm-hmm. I think is just a little bit, you know, just a little bit too narratively offensive, just in a way. Like, you, these are torns, you know, let's be honest, they're, they're technically minotaurs. You can give them other types of fantasy set names, still let them have, like, their way of culture, like, the way they do things. But it's the naming convention. Eh. Mm. <laughs> I, I've yeah. seen some really some really some really crazy things things i wish i could unsee (laughs) yeah and i think i think that is the problem i think because i think a lot of people especially you know in in like the role play community i think a lot of people who don't um see what could be problematic are then trying to copy blizzard with the naming and everything um in their their TRP profiles and for people who don't know what TRP is it's total roleplay it's an add-on that will let you fill in more about your character than the game allows for 
Yes. Um, and other people who use that add-on can see that and read that. So, you know, it, it's a bit like d and I guess, when you have a character sheet. Um, but, it, it, yeah, it's, it's a little bit like Blizzard might need to start leading by example with certain things to yeah. make sure that that doesn't happen in the community. At least get, like, at least get outside sources. You know, yeah. if you, if you want to do a game, you want to include certain things in there, have outside sources. You know, talk mm-hmm. to some other people. You know, get to work with some of the independent people that are out here, too. You know, just, the, you know, the other people of color out here. Varieties of everybody. Get to work on them. Get some influence. Get some ideas. Talk to them to see how you can go about doing it without trying to, like, purposely offend everybody. Yeah. Because there are many companies who can. So, and, you and, know. And they do it. And, they, like, I'll tell you, for example, Elder Scrolls, not even, I, I, I know this is Warcraft, but Elder Scrolls, fine, does a fine job. Mm-hmm. I'm just plugging that in there. Just, just plugging yeah. that in there. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree. And and because that brings me to, to the next thing. Yep. You know, what could Blizzard <clears throat> do to have more inclusivity and and it's not just about races or skin color but like other things like for instance you know i know that D &D made a i think it's called a compendium uh that yeah that people had uh the option to have their characters in wheelchairs and actually had a really elaborate way of what sort of wheelchairs it could be and how they would function and you know i look at like the mecha gnomes and i'm like okay so why can't we have certain things like that for the other races in the game? Because with all this war and everything that's going on, right. I'm sure people have, you know, not have all their limbs anymore or anything like that, or have had really horrible war wounds. So do you feel like Blizzard could do something like that? Or, or is there even something else that they could do when it comes to race and, and uh, backgrounds of, of races and cultures? Uh, let's see. In terms of including including everybody, you know, mm-hmm. and just in terms of who they are, like I like let's say for example, the wheelchair thing. I I 100. All right, I'm 50 50. I agree, and also I want to play devil uh, play a little devil's advocate. So like I do think there should be something included for people on here, regard especially regarding the game and how the game transforms. Like you said, we we go through a lot of shit in the damn game. We damn near stop gods, be demons. Mm-hmm. Half of us probably have legs missing, toes missing, tusks missing, ears missing. You know, we're, we're probably missing a lot of stuff. You know, and realistically, I would like to be able to reflect that. Like I would be able to reflect that. And then in some ways too. Like, if I do reflect it, I often wonder. I think to myself about this a lot, actually. I think I'm like, if we were to display certain things like this, would it actually offend people? Mm-hmm. You know, people that may actually have these certain set disabilities or certain things going on. You know, would it actually, like, because it's, it's a 50 50 take. Some of them might actually be willing to, like, go forward with it. Be like, yeah, cool. Uh, and some people might actually think Blizzard might be trying to mock them or, or players, you know, players online. Because, you know, players are sometimes can be the worst by mm-hmm. trying to mock people. But but in certain ideas, especially regarding the mechanome, I think it would be a great idea. Like, I met a Forsaken person one time in game. They had, the idea of their character was that um, when they were raised, they lost, like, at most half of their limbs. Mm-hmm. And, then it, and then a goblin basically made mechanical arms to give them. So this And this Forsaken is a monk. By the way, so this Forsaken is just kind of like you know, it's it's all you know, Forsaken are already dead, and then they're basically got these mechanical arms going around doing. It. I think that's cool. I think, and especially because we have that technology in game, technology, tech, technology, technology. Mm-hmm. We have that technology in game. So you know, I would think it'd be great if Blizzard could actually add some influence. They don't have to go like full hard core into it like let me just give my whole troll like a whole missing bum leg or something like that mm-hmm. but it, but at least something that a little bit like they were on target when they did night elves and they gave them the burn marker children cells mm-hmm. you know some something to reflect you know even if you are just starting out as a new player with the new tune or whatever but but the older players at least too something to just reflect how your character has been through the game, how you progress through the game. Just something that shows that. Because I think other games do a good job 
of showing that. And I think what Blizzard can do, what they should do actually, is like <clears throat> they should take notes. Mm-hmm. You 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 can only remain on the top, on the top, on the top, on the top for so long before someone else does what you could have did better. It's like it's like I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you what Blizzard is to other MMOs mm-hmm. in a way. All right, Blizzard is like Apple. <laughs> Everybody else is like Android. All right. Now, Apple is very popular. It's been around for a minute. Everybody's familiar with it. It's embedded in people's eco. You know, it's 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 a it's a very broad thing. Mm-hmm. Then you have Android, which is somewhat on the background side of things, but it gives you a lot of customization capability it gives you a lot of uniqueness to yourself it puts a lot of different elements of like third-party apps other world stuff into your hands so it makes it feel like your phone is an extension of you this is you you know if this is you in a way and then there's apple (laughs) who could do that (laughs) they should do that but instead they just give you bit by bit stuff Mm-hmm. While Android already has dark mode and they've been having it for five years, Apple just gets it <laughs> after <laughs> after the fact. They just it's like World of Warcraft. While these other games are like so far ahead, listening to their players, listening to the advice that they're giving them while actually playing the games, they mm-hmm. take that and they they use it into fruition to boom a beautiful game. They 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 give the people what they want while also still doing what they want to do. Like, they compromise. You know, I, I feel that Blizzard doesn't, and I'm sorry if I'm ranting, but I'm just, I feel like Blizzard doesn't, like, do that enough. Like, it tell, Blizzard needs to take some of their people and just tell them, go play these other games. Mm-hmm. Go play these games and see why people are so invested into it so we can see how to get our fan base back because we're, we're taking L's right now. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the thing, you know, it, it is a game that's over 15 years old. At a certain point, the younger competition is going to come in w- exactly. and will blow us away with what they have, especially when it comes to customizations and everything right. like that. Right. And they will have to react to that. I don't, I don't, they, they, they really, they, like I said, you can only remain a king for so long. And they just mm-hmm. think that because they can, they can use microtransaction or because they know people will play the game like let, let's be honest for the fact you know i unsubbed for a while for a bit um i was gifted a sub recently to come back but i was unsubbed for a while for a bit because i i wouldn't i i was so done you know with 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 shadowlands at least to the point where i did everything and they didn't have any further content to really just do anima farming is a bitch um i'm too damn lazy to even attempt to do an alt just to get some soul ass because that shit is some damn work <laughs> you know um I, i'm pvp heavy focus so I, I i'm lazy on that shit because i'm a shaman main so we can't get we got we get love they give us love and then it's not enough <laughs> so <laughs> so you know that that's out the damn question <clears throat> and meanwhile these other games they do stuff that they make me interested and you know they make me feel invested they make it feel like they they I'm not saying they hold my hand while I play the game, but they're right there. And if I fuck up, they say, hey, did you fuck up, buddy? That's okay. We'll fix that for you. And meanwhile, Blizzard's over here while you're over there complaining like, hey, man, I um, I spilled my I spilled my fucking uh, cereal on my keyboard. And Blizzard's just like, oh, man, we're sorry that you did that. Well, here's a free gift card to Applebee's. I'm like, nah, I want a free keyboard. (laughs) What the fuck? That's probably a horrible example, but they get they fix shit that you don't want to be fixed, that they think Mm -hmm. that needs to be fixed. And it's it's not the case. It's it's not the case at all. And 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 it's like you said, they can only like they 15 years. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. And the newer competition, you know, it feeds into like the newer waves, the newer generation, then the the now. You know how to Mm -hmm. say it, the now. They and, and it's what people want. Like a lot of these indie companies, like these indie gaming companies, are keeping gaming alive, like to an extent, because they're producing something for everybody, at least, and they're listening to players. Be it some of the stuff may be good, bad, whatever, but at least they're attempting something that Blizzard 
could be doing because they're already 15 years ahead of the game, but they're acting like they, they don't want to upgrade anything. They, they're hesitant on the stuff that they want to give. And they, they're, just, they're just really relying on the fact that people are going to come back because of the story. Because mm-hmm. the story is good. Don't get me wrong. Wild story is amazing. And 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 then when somebody finds out that their class is getting buffed, <laughs> <laughs> still, the only and customization. Those are the the three, the holy three, the holy three. Story, <laughs> class buff, <laughs> player customization. If you, if you can't at least improve on those three. Blizzard, Blizzard is really just going to get outthrown by the other competition. Yeah, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. I, I I can't agree more uh, with you on the, on that. Um, what would you like to see them do in the future when it comes to customization options for races? Do you feel like, well, for one, I think we both agree that they need to cut out this whole shit of a, a, a face is tied to a skin color. Facts. <laughs> Get that shit off right off the bat. <laughs> but is there something else that you think that they they should be doing? I I want oh 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 oh. I I here's oh this is beautiful. So what I want them to do, and and I'm I'm a, I'm gonna make a call back to earlier when I said how they included the burn mark from Telltale. Mm-hmm. What I want them to do is that events that that transpire in the game that happened that what we go through i want them to be able to include those customizations so we can like reflect on that so we can express that you know like if my troll if my troll whether it's allied or core if my troll went through the whole battle of the czar lord lost both of his tusks i want to be able to display that shit i, I want you know i want to i want i want that in there like like for cu- the customization doesn't just need to be limited to the characters. The the damn everything needs to be revamped. Everything needs to be customized right now. We need to re. That's the one way they can get players really back into the game if they actually just upgraded the world to how it is with all the events that recently happened that transpired, so we can see that reflection. So we can see the growth. You know, it's one thing to see your character grow, how you changed them throughout when you first started WoW to versus how you are now, all the different hairstyles, skin colors, armor you may get. But it's another thing to see where Orgrimmar, Stormwind, it's legit just changed over time, been tampered with, look different. You know, just show show reflections of that in the game. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, yeah. that e- even if this like a phase, you can do unfazed, the phase version, you can do stuff for certain like high level players that want to be in the future end of the game or players that just want to stay in the past in the games and, and do stuff like they're, they're capable of doing that and mm-hmm. it can be done it's just like why haven't they did it like you can't just keep using the this, this same thing forever like eventually you're gonna have to like stop wow make a wow too and you know with everything that we want or take WoW to an elevated level that gets you in competitions with your rivals and competitors. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, because the games out there are starting to get pretty good with their <laughs> customizations they're, and everything. Really snazzy and, and crazy with it. It's 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 fun it's phenomenal. <laughs> like you it 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 makes me upset. Cause I'm like Blizzard, where what are y'all doing? <laughs> like, y'all promise people stuff, you know, y'all promise stuff, and then you didn't deliver, and then have the nerve to say that's not our focus right now. I'm like, mm. Bro, come on now. <laughs> yeah, because again, I think you know, I, I I'm doing this series not to only bash into World of Warcraft and say yes. we're doing this wrong. It's more of a because we we love the game so much. We want them to do better because there is all this competition out there and we know that people are going to to go at a certain point if nothing changes. Right. And the thing that keeps an MMO al- uh, you know, alive and online is the amount of players. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's the amount of players that keep coming back that I, I hate to say it, but we feed them money. Let, let's be honest here. We, yeah. we, we legit feed them money. We feed them money. And I'm not saying we do that selfishly for them to like provide us stuff. We we feed them money so we can enjoy it and submerge ourselves into a game that we enjoy playing. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't break my pockets for just any old thing. You know, I may do it for Netflix, you know, maybe Hulu, maybe that Planet Fitness membership that I have that I haven't been to the gym since 2019. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go eventually. But we, we, we do that because we know we're going to come back to it. You know, but if there's nothing for us to really come back to, if there's no improvements or nothing, you know, that just really sates us and just makes us excited to play the game, then it's like, I'm going to go try other things. And I feel like we should. I feel like Blizzard should tell people that, hey, if you don't feel like doing this right now, instead of us trying to, like, keep you trapped in with a whole bunch of microtransactions and and damn, like, things you could do, but you got to purchase this, you got to do that, you got to spend money and stuff like that, just chill out, take a break, play some other games. I know other companies are very good about letting their players do that. Yeah, and and I've it's the one thing I've always said to people like if you don't enjoy the game at that point in time or you don't agree with something, the best thing you can do is vote with your pocket because it's just you know don't use your wallet on them anymore and do something else 100%. and just and check that out and it, you know it might be that that game is the new thing for you. I know that a lot of people went to Final Fantasy at a certain point because that's more their thing. I tried it. Not for me. I I can't get into the story, but I'm very happy for people who can. Hmm. For me, it will always be Warcraft, but I always feel like they can do better. (laughs) So Final Fantasy is it's. So I've only played Final Fantasy two. I remember Mm -hmm. that, and I remember Final Fantasy Advent Children or whatever, and then I remember Final Fantasy seven. Um, and. At first, I was just really skeptical because I'm like, I- I'm not trying to like say it in anything like that, but it's like it's 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 one of them games. It's just it's like I don't know, man. It looks a little bit too anime to me. Like, and don't don't give me. I love anime. I'm an anime <laughs> fan, but it's just like it. It's just mm, it, it doesn't. The story just really doesn't capture me. But <laughs> but the gameplay the amount of things that I can do in that game that I'll I'll tell you what sold me on Final Fantasy low key I'll tell you exactly what sold me it's not male bunnies that's the second thing that sold me (laughs) (laughs) that's the second thing Samurai's the third the first thing that sold me compared to WoW and I love World of Warcraft I do that is I replaced ESO for World of Warcraft that is my number one game Mm -hmm. But the the difference is when I first started playing WoW, I came into this game. There was shit thrown at me from left and right. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't know where the fuck to go. I didn't know what the fuck the lore was. And apparently, I would have had to play classic. I would have had to play classic from the very beginning going all the way up to learn about the game instead of coming into retail it's like what i like is that it's they you have to go through them in order you know you 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 don't just jump into like stormbringers or and, and shadow walkers what you don't just jump into them you start from born ass a realm reborn it's born as shit i enjoy it because it's just reuniting my little kid in me that had the love for final fantasy but you you start from that and and you go up into the shit you know you can still be with your friends hang with your friends do whatever to an extent because level but the web you know levels are, are locked by weapon classes or classes that you choose your jobs or whatever but i like the fact that you can just go through expansions like that because eventually it makes you want to learn about the game you learn about the story the story is right there presented the story makes it feel like you just the character matter it makes you feel like an adventurer again wow doesn't make me feel like an adventurer anymore i feel like a damn god that's done godly shit they can't die unless i'm in pvp by other make-believe guys that are the other players <laughs> like it, it doesn't it doesn't give me that hey you're an adventurer starting out that's what that's what people are missing with world of warcraft we've done it all and mm-hmm. to say now hell we even went to the damn afterlife so we've really done it all except go to space except go to space next expansion <laughs> that will be Fingers- Fingers crossing, fingers crossing that we go to. I, I'm, I don't want to say anything too much, but just know that, you know, two forces, two <laughs> forces 
one one has to rule overall. That's that's all I'm gonna say. But I, it'd be nice if they if they could do something like that. You know, don't get me wrong. Like I, Final Fantasy is nice to play and all. I still hate it. Okay, <laughs> it's it's still not my cup of tea. But you know, I'm invested into it, so I'm I'm going to play it out because you know I, I just want to at least try it. There's no harm in trying something. Even if it looks like it may suck, just try it anyway. You may like something about it. That little thing may actually pull you in. Like, had I not tried World of Warcraft and didn't play Trolls and actually didn't stick with it, I probably wouldn't have liked the game. But you find something in there that you like. So, you know. Yeah. No, and, and that's, you know, fair enough. I think people should try it. And I, I do hear at Final Fantasy that the first A Realm Reborn, that's the hardest one to get through. And after that, apparently the story becomes amazing. Yeah. Um, I have a hard time getting through the first bit, to be honest. I, I do too. I, I put headphones on, or when I'm hanging with my Discord crew, we just, I just, you know, mob, just go through it, just bond zombie. Years of grinding and wow has just experienced me to just click through stuff that I think is boring and just go. I listen to the story too, but at the same time, I just zoned in. Like I'm, I'm only level 34 right now. I'm I'm just trying to hit 50 so I can live my samurai anime legends dream. That's that's it. That's, that's it. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will hit that soon enough. Thank you. Right. So, thank you for that part of the interview. Um, yeah. I think we should go to the to the more generic questions regarding World of Warcraft. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, what everyone always wants to know, and I have a suspicion, but I still want to know: mm-hmm. horde or alliance? Ho, ho. Oh, oh, there's only, there's only, there's only one choice. I'm a horde all day. Horde. <laughs> and is that because of the trolls or is there, is there a different reason why the horde? Um, honestly, because of the trolls. But now, now hold on. <laughs> cause like I said, I'm still new to the game cause I came in Legion, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've went, I've ran through hella lore, hella everything, you know, even dabbled a little bit in Warcraft 3 just to learn a bit more about the horde and preferably from from a story standpoint i kind of understand where everybody is coming from mm-hmm. to to a to a legitimate extent you have a whole bunch of different people may have been outcasted by some of their own people just doing different things they are just trying to come together to at least try to somewhat make a decent living their place you know Mm-hmm. That that's that's like that on both sides, not just you know horde. That's also like that on the alliance too. The alliance do the same thing, but it's just the only thing that makes the horde a bit just slightly different is that these are different people, well creatures, monsters. These are entirely different plans of beings with mm-hmm. completely different customs and cultures and stuff like that. They just want to at least try to coexist or just don't want to be bothered. <laughs> the alliance, on the other hand, it's the same thing. It it to an extent. But it's just a bit different where it's just a bit more civilized. Mm-hmm. It's a bit more like, uh, how to say it? It's a bit more correct, if I'm, you know, to, just to put it in terms like that. Mm-hmm. But hoard all day because I'm a troll lover. Trolls get the best love. It's, 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 it, it's, it's, it's that right there. That's it. I don't plus, plus, I, I get it. I get it. We're all humans. I get it. I understand that. But why? Why would you want to play a human? <laughs> <laughs> you live it. You, bre- I'm broke in real life. I don't want to be broke in the game too. <laughs> like I, that's twice. Like no, come, come, come to the other side. Be an honorary horde loyalist. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, you know, people know that I'm I'm very purple uh, where I stand with my colors, but. I, I, you know, I do love the trolls. Perfect. Trolls are the best, best race. Well, yeah, per- I, I'm very bifactional. Mm, okay, 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 okay. I understand. <laughs> All right, I, I don't judge you. I don't judge. You. I got some alliance characters too. Ain't nothing wrong. I get you know, got to got to see what the competition is cooking up with just a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, who doesn't like a worgen? That's that's also where I'm I'm on that point. I like worgen, but my I, I'm a big in fantasy. I'm a big wood elf fan. Mm. So I, I stand. If that was Alliance, I'm standing with the Night Elves all day, every day. Yeah. Even though I think Mal Furion is a piece of shit, I'll, I'll, I'm standing with the Night Elves. <laughs> they, you know, the Night Elves as a race, I think they're amazing. I think their leadership that needs a little bit of tweaking with how they've written them. But that's that's 
Hey, some house cleaning. That's what that is. Yeah, the, I thought that was going to be a uh, kick-ass, but mm, it, it has proven to be a little bit of a, of a weak uh, source with what's happening over there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, your main. Now, I think you've already said that you have a troll shaman. Yes. Uh, my first character ever in the game was a dark spirit shaman. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I knew how to do was getting stuck in between bookcases <laughs> <laughs> and casting lightning bolt, <laughs> chain lightning bolt. <laughs> That's when I first started playing the game. Cause again, I didn't know what I was really doing. But now, more advanced, I play um, enhancement shaman. Uh, jump a little bit with elemental. Don't ask me to heal you because I've one track minded. Um, I play Zandalari. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like. I love the dark spear. I love, it's not even because of the straight back. I love the dark spear a lot. I love everything about him, but it's just something about the Zandalari and just the small African influences as opposed to the Jamaican influences that really just resonates with me. And, and I, I just, I love it. Plus to be, to be honest too, you know, if I were to come into this game as a beginner, I would have, I would have preferred one to start from classic so I can at least learn mm-hmm. from the ground up. You know, start that way. Mm-hmm. When, when you know, when I came in Legion and then BFA. So BFA was technically my first expansion. Um, and I played, and there's this whole race of the Zandalar to me. How, how that part of the game just really opened me up to a lot of stuff just by playing them. It really exposed me to a lot of things playing the Zandalari. And that's why I consider that like my race of choice because I feel like I'm more of an allied race than a core race. I feel mm-hmm. like anybody, you can be whatever you want in this game, but just how I, just how I feel, I feel like core races for those players that actually been there, and then allied races are for the people who are just, you know, who are really getting into this game. Now there's this whole subset of people that I can identify with that I can play this game into, and I love the culture, everything troll. If if they were up to me though, if they were up to me, and if they had darker green skin for the dark spirit trolls, I'd be rolling the money. <laughs> I'll be rolling that that's my true troll choice I'm a money till the day I die vengeance for Zuljan Zuljan did nothing wrong I'm advocating that I uh, you know what I would <laughs> love to be able to to roll a, a money uh, <gasps> troll that's my dream they're not gonna I give think, it to me though well you know I feel like we should really because they have the uh, the Faraki in there they as well do, and they 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 technically got they technically got dark trolls which are technically extinct quote mm-hmm. unquote so I'm like, why don't we have? And they got they got that mint green skin. I'm like, that's not really green. That just looks like, you know, your dog ate some grass and threw it back up. That's not that's not the same type of green. I want forest green, like mossy green. I want yeah. I want to be Amani or give me troll beards, Amani or beards. <laughs> yeah, it's scary how similar we think about this when it comes to trolls. Because I'm such an advocate for troll beards. Because I'm like, well, everyone else seems to be able to grow it, so I don't understand what's wrong with that. So exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't hope that Blizzard is going the way as um, Elder Scrolls does it at times <laughs> with you know customization for characters. Yeah, there's a t- there's a ton of st- that. You know, it would be nice too if Blizzard didn't like hair lock or. You yeah. Know, ta- well, tattoo lock, I guess, is a cultural thing. I get that. But at least just, you know, let it be, let stuff be shared. I think so. And, you know, sometimes it's just the changing it for the models. And I can easily say that because I don't do anything with computers or anything <laughs> like that. So for me, it's easy to say, like, just adjust it. But, right. you know, yeah, I don't see why not. Why, why not give the people what they want? So you said that you started in Legion. Yes. What got you into World of Warcraft? And when was that moment that you thought, oh yeah, this is the game I really am, am enjoying to play? The moment I got Doomhammer. <laughs> okay. The moment I held that in my hand and said, I'm Thor. <laughs> and I lifted that puppy up. <laughs> and the lightning, that that's what really that's what really started my love for my friends, my friends invited me in. I play in a I play most of my friends. Uh, I have a variety of friends, but the Discord server that I'm in, a lot of them are people of color. We've mm-hmm. known each other since um, 16 years old, so they've actually been playing WoW way before me because I was off 
doing party uh party movie things in college just being a horrible influence uh, so when i had a break when i had, I had to take a uh I had to sit out for a semester for two years mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I had a break and my friends were like, Hey man, why don't you, um, why don't you come play World of Warcraft with us so we can play games, you know, on PC. Cause at the time I only had a PlayStation. So I really mm-hmm. didn't, that's why I played all the scrolls on it first. So I really didn't dive into like PC knowledge, PC master race, PC world. So like, yeah, man, get your, uh, get yourself a laptop and, you know, come, come play with us. And I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I used to see, you know, I remember going by Walmart with my mom when I used to buy new Pokemon games from my Nintendo. I used to see the box out of World of Warcraft on there. I used to thought it was cool until I seen the rated M on there. And my mom said, you can't play this game. Plus, we don't have a computer. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man, damn, that that sucks. But uh, but now I had a computer at a I had a good working computer that would actually allow me to support Potato Wow. And so they're like, yeah, man, come play. So like I downloaded uh, downloaded Legion. I played. They were like, I'm going through everything. At first, I was going to choose Alliance because technically, mm-hmm. technically, my first character was a Deaf Knight Worgen named Grimgrave. But I didn't know what I was doing. I just said Worgen sounds cool, and I just kept hit the random name generator. And I was like, Grimgrave sounds also cool. And my friends was like, No, no, what are you doing? You can't play with us. You're on Alliance. I'm like, Well, what's the difference? It's like the alliance are bad. <laughs> you don't want to be a part of the alliance. The alliance are bad. You want to be horde. Plus, you uh, you 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 know, you you like one of them troll people. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, is this a black thing? He's like, no, it's not that. It's just you know, because you look like you enjoy smoking weed a lot. And, you know, you like doing capoeira and jungle flips and stuff. And I was like, you might have sold me. <laughs> you you, you might have sold me a little bit. And um, I started playing. Um, I started learning about the story, learning about the different characters, learning about Uncle Volgen, and the mm-hmm. game just, it really, it hooked me in. I would, but the only thing that was made me upset was like, so can I play this even if I don't have a subscription? And they're like, oh no, you gotta pay for this, buddy. And I'm like, oh man, I don't have a job. <laughs> like, I can't, like I can't play it, I don't have a job. That's the one drawback. But <clears throat> since then, I've been, the game it it, the love the story the characters trolls especially i I love it It, it's amazing to me okay very very cool so you said you you started in legion when they announced that classic was going to be a thing and now of course you know when we're recording this burning crusades out um again so did you ever feel the temptation to go back to classic to check that out i did i did go back to classic and check it out how did you find that? Uh, uh, it feels like a real MMORPG. How, in a way, I wish WoW could have been when I first played it. Like, mm-hmm. a hunter has to legit get ammo. You have mm-hmm. to legit feed your pets or they will die. <laughs> that is, that is that, that element, I like it. I like the old elements to it. Even though trolls scare the fuck out of me because they look creepy mm. as shit. Troll women mm-hmm. are still beautiful, though. It's still beautiful. <laughs> um, I just really couldn't because I would because I had so much knowledge already <clears throat> mm-hmm. of the story and everything that was going on, especially during BFA and you know going into Shadowlands and catching up playing uh, Wad and Mister Pandaria and Wrath of the Lich King. I I really didn't feel I couldn't just sink into it because. It's like I really my friends didn't really play classic like that. You know, they had already graduated from playing classic. I, I'm the newbie. And I know classic is very somewhat friend oriented. And I know a lot of the game has changed up a bit to a point like I'd be going around doing quests. I see people in long ass lines. I'm like, what the hell are y'all in line for? <laughs> this ain't a role play community. Like what the like what the hell are y'all in line for? <laughs> like what's going on? I asked somebody. They say they're waiting. Uh, they're waiting to kill a war boss. I'm like, the fuck! I got a waiting line to kill a war boss. I gotta. I can't just do that shit like together. Like, I learned classic is a very, very different game, and it, it's not played by the faint of heart. Mm-hmm. I managed to get to 15. I am <laughs> faint of heart. <laughs> you know what? It it is a a different type of game. I, I I completely agree with you. I mean, the quality of life at, in retail. I enjoy it because it's 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 a it's a bit different. I, I because it, it's something to play classic. 
you legit just have to sit down, have nothing on your schedule, order your food unless you pre-cooked, have a drink, have a smoke, have some background music, have whatever you have on your agenda ready to do, sit down and just play with no distractions. It's one of those games where you literally just got to like, you don't have to immediately zoom in and focus, but it's just one of those nice pastime games where you can get a lot done if you have a lot of free time Mm -hmm. you know it's it's like that and i like that yeah no i there there's a certain charm to it Uh, um, i i completely agree with that and and how you described it that's exactly how we played it back in the day so (laughs) (laughs) i'd I'd play it i'll I'll go back to classic i'll pick up tbc i might give blizzard my money if and only if they tell me that the gods of zulaman is coming if I get Zul'jin, because that's one thing I wish I could do in this game, besides spend a thousand dollars on TCG, that amount that I probably can never get again. I at least want to be able to do the Zul'jin campaign. I, I missed out on that, and that saddens me. It may not be a big deal to people, but it saddens me. Because when I went there, I was expecting Zul'jin, and I didn't see his ass, and I was upset. And if Davis told me like, oh yeah, they changed the uh when the Rise of the Zandalari came out, they changed the they changed the raid, uh I think it was a raid that turned into a dungeon, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I can't kill Zul'jin? I can't I'm not, I wasn't even gonna kill him really. I was just gonna let everybody else kill him. I was just either gonna stand there AFK or die. I'm like, I am a I'm a Zul'jin loyalist, so I'm not gonna touch you. <laughs> but if, if if TBC came out, the guys knew Zulam. If they they came back out with that, I would one hundred percent dedicate myself I'm, I'm not shitting i would dedicate myself and go balls deep <laughs> well who knows what will happen you know blizzard has done a, a lot of like bringing stuff back so we'll see blizzard can't oh. be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to retail so uh shadowlands what are your impressions of of shadowlands so far um i think it was it was a long time coming i think shadowlands was really overdue we mm-hmm. should have been Compared to what we were doing with Legion, you know, we really should have been to Shadowlands a bit early. I, I know how the story rolls, but I, the thought of going to the afterlife at first, you know, first hearing about it, going to the afterlife, doing certain things, helping certain covenants, it, it sounded amazing. It still sounds amazing. It's like, it's like, ah, f- hold on, t- t- stop for a second. It's really weird, too, because around the times that they announced Shadowlands, a whole bunch of other games really just started announcing their Shadow titles. And I'm like, this has to be a trend right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's every game trying to lead to this. But when Blizzard, you know, when they announced Shadowlands and the fact that we were going to the afterlife, for one, I'm like, OK, this is dope. This is going to answer a lot of questions that a lot of people, you know, a lot of us have had. Or this is going to show us new things. But I almost begin to wonder if it's too soon because after the events of BFA there's still a lot of stuff Mm. that really needs to be answered that needs to unfold before we jump just straight out to the end like I'm sorry I can't just go from killing an old god doing some heroic ass shit to just immediately jumping back into war and then Sylvanas does some fucky shit and then all of a sudden I end up in Shadowlands, where is the possibility that I might not come back unless it's Warcraft, RNG, and physics because they put a portal in the Shadowlands for me to go back home. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, couldn't we have first like gone through the issues that we still had on Azeroth? Like, I still feel like Teldrassil, and I'm a horror player. I'm not a horde loyalist. I'm a Zandalari, first of all. We're skeptical of the horde. That's it's a true thing. We're skeptical. If you read Shadows Rising, you know. But I'm just... It, it upsets me that they didn't capitalize like on trying to continue that story. On trying to finish that out. I wanted to see if Tyrande got revenge. Mm-hmm. You know, fully. Like, i have like... You, you know, we talk about we got to point we got into a point where at one point Jaina almost flooded Orgamar. You know, I wanted to see what Taronda was going to do. I wanted to see how the alliance would bounce back from that. 
Instead, mm -hmm. we got a neutral peace bringing after the whole event, um, you know, going on with Sylvanas and stuff. And then it, it, it's and we just jump right into Shadowlands. It just feels too soon. Like it's mm -hmm. overdue in a way. Like I wish we would have been there sooner. But it also just feels too soon for them to do it now, especially after we just got out of a whole war. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's like, hey, stop fighting each other. There's bigger things to hand. You're a champion. You're a god. Go to the Shadowlands and do their stuff. And I'm just like, uh, but but PvP, bro. Like <laughs> the war. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, I mean, there are so many loose ends that still need to be tied up. Yes. Uh, with what's going on and I guess because time goes different in the Shadowlands it gives the developers time to maybe do something with Azeroth while we're technically not there so I guess we'll just have to see what happens but I, I do agree with you some of it is a bit like okay we're we're, this, we're just running into the next uh, set of problems without fixing what is already like happening so, yeah, it, it it's a lot. There's a lot going on. Um, with your Troll Shaman, did you pick a specific covenant uh, in mind that you were like, okay, this fits my my Shaman the best, or did you go like, no, no, no this is this is what Wowhead says that I need to pick for for my class. So this is what I'm taking. Oh, I had the hardest headache trying to. <laughs> I'm like, do I want to be meta or do I just want to be fun? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, so I wanted to go to Reverend Drift for Chad Harvest because for shamans, the, they they gave shamans a bit of love. We're still glass. We're still, you know, glass cannons. Like we could still be shattered, but they gave us some love. And I wanted to be meta just to do certain things in pvp so i could be good so i could feel mm -hmm. powerful but Arden and will was offering a better story because it was a story that tied into zandalar in a way mm -hmm. that previously tied into uh but spoiler alert if, if people don't know but it, it previous the story also ties into what, it, what goes on in Arden world also ties into uh shadows rising um the book that was recently released so Art and Will was like a better choice. Um Fate Transfusion, it got better. They buffed it. It does stuff. It takes away health. <laughs> I know it's very useful in PvP when I'm in a tight spot. <laughs> when I'm waiting on cooldowns, especially GCD. It's 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 wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the story too. Because it, it's I, I care about PvP, yes, but you're not gonna see me in esports. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to see me doing no hardcore competitive stuff. It's just casual player versus player, like how I would play Destiny doing PvP and then doing PvE stuff, you know? So, and I really wish Blizz I really wish Meta wouldn't allow it to the point where it's like this, this, um, this covenant ability is better than this covenant ability. This covenant ability works better when you have this legendary. You know, I... I don't like that. I just because what's the point of making so many legendaries to use if you really can't use them in sync with your covenant ability or anything else? It's not really helpful to you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it just feels like a complete waste. Yeah. Like a horrible waste. So uh Arden Will definitely for me, not even just for the trolls, but it's a beautiful place. Maldraxxus is where I should go, it's where I belong because Zuljin is there. Well, he should be there, actually. Zul'jin is in Revendruff. That makes me sad. He should be mm -hmm. in Maldraxxus. Maldraxxus is for the warriors that, uh, the, the, the what we call them, me and Michael call it the mosh pit. The mosh pit <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> I, 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 I love doing it. Um, Bastion is meh. It's, it's good. That's beautiful elements. I, I love it, but it's just meh. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't do it. And then Revendruff, it's God, the aesthetics. <laughs> hmm. You want to talk about the aesthetics that they did to it? It's, it's, it's miraculous. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful place. So Dark. For, mm -hmm. from, from those four, if you had to pick, mm -hmm. which one would be your most favorite area? Uh, Maldraxxus. 
Arden Weld close second. Okay. Only because of the other side. Only mm-hmm. because of the other side. Because I love it there. But I'm going to give it to Maldraxxus because it has me asking the most questions that I've ever asked about a game's home world. Because I need <laughs> to know if Maldraxxus is an actual living organism or not. Mm-hmm. Because of the skin, the hair. Like, I just need to know, like, legitimate questions. This is beyond just flesh. Like, this is this is a real, like, this is... It's like some. It's like living on somebody's face, you know. Like you look through a little microscopic, <laughs> you probably just see yourself in somebody's pores, just doing quests. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Taliesin and Evertel made a video about why Maldraxxus is a living creature. Really? I have to yeah, look. yeah, I think so. I think they made a video about that. It's been a while ago, but I remember seeing something like that. So it would explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to create your own Shadowlands realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that we're missing maybe from those those uh, I'm calling it five realms plus Oribos uh, and, and of course the Maw um, what would it be like and what would you call it hmm Ooh, if I have to create my own Shadowlands um I would definitely have everything be you ever seen Dante's Inferno Ooh, a very long time ago you know how they have the rings, like yeah. in basically in circles of hell. Mm-hmm. Well, in a in a similar situation, I wish they would do that with the Shadowlands, where it would be in different, different, different circles with different things for different people. Uh but still doing among the same things, the similar to what Wild Shadowlands is currently doing. But each area is in representation of the things that we've encountered in the actual game. Uh, I think I would I would very much like that. Personally, I think the Maldraxxus the Maldraxxus as things should like really be spread throughout because <laughs> I think it's just a wonderful place. But I think a lot of people should really fight for their chance to survive. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you feel like it's a fair, whether you feel like you got to the Shadowlands fairly or unfairly. I believe that everybody should have a fair chance to fight for survival, which they do because, you know, in current Shadowlands, they go through judgment. But in my ideal Shadowlands, I think everybody should fight to get out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just just yep. make it how badly do you want this? <laughs> you know, how badly do you, you know, fight, fight for your survival or else perish forever. Mm-hmm. And then risk, you know, risk becoming a husk, a remnant of time ceasing to exist who you once were you know that 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 to me would be dope but definitely elements from the seven circles of hell and and shadowlands infused into it i think that would be my own version of shadowlands sounds really cool it almost sounds like a dark soul title i quite like yeah, that actually. yeah yeah <laughs> definitely like dark souls <clears throat> probably just to be funny have muzala or bon samdi pre like rule over it like, because I feel in a way, the Loa should still have a strong, strong connections with, you know, I know they have them with the wild gods and the old gods and stuff too, but with the Titans as well, and the Titan construct, they should really have a strong connection, at least for me, mm-hmm. to the point where it's like Bonsambi is recognized as this really dominant figure because he is technically the real overseer of the afterlife. Let's be honest, he's really technically the Grim Reaper, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, he should be, he watches every soul. Like, he 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 goes through every soul as much. When souls die, they usually pass through him. Nine times out of ten, they're passing through him. Mm-hmm. Even though he's greedy and he, you know, he makes sure he looks out for the troll souls. Because, you know, I got to be a little biased. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he's amazing. So, why not? <laughs> right. So, from all the new characters that we've met in the Shadowlands, who is your favorite new character? Oh, um, let's see. Favorite? Ooh, that's a tough decision. Um, to me, <clears throat> my favorite new character, and it's technically not new. It's new to me because I still didn't know a lot about the game. It's not new to some other people. Um, Draka, at least the new okay. version of Draka. Yeah. Um, because I think it's so cool. <laughs> When when I see the afterlife, I love. I, now, if I had to choose somebody else besides Rocket, that she would technically count. I would definitely say the Winter Queen because she's just mm-hmm. the full of air, of 
mystery. Yeah. I know people are expecting me to say Lord Lord D, but not in this house. We stand a queen, the Winter Queen. But definitely between Draka and the Winter Queen. Draka because her story, her story, her lore and story is very interesting to me, especially how she winded up there in a position that she ended up taking. She is what the player should do if we were going to Shadowlands. Mm-hmm. We needed to do what Draka has done to just become this rise up, which we're technically doing now, but just not in that way because we, they really don't have another choice. They need us. <laughs> <laughs> but how she went through it is exactly how I imagine players to do it. it mm-hmm. It's exactly that. But the Winter Queen, um, she's just a complete air of mystery to me. I know they don't do too much with her, and she, you know, she she makes her appearances every now and then. But she, the emotion that she has alone, just about how she feels, you know, with her guard, with Arden Will, mm-hmm. is is it's beautiful to me. It's poetic. It's I love it. I I want to know who her sister is. I'm sorry, spoiler alert. If I said too much, I apologize. No, it's I fine. Said beforehand. It's fine. But there, there's some there's there's so much going on with her and Arden Will that I just really want to dive into. And, and her and Moonberry, they just make such interesting characters. <laughs> <laughs> what Arden, the Arden Will is a trip because it's the only place <clears throat> that you go to when you when you play a game and when you're going through the campaign, the opening campaign to see, you know, which covenant you're going to choose. They make, once you choose Arden Will, they make you put on a play just to relive your trauma mm-hmm. <laughs> of everything that you did prior to that point. Like, it's okay. Like, they're saying, we're going to tell a heroic story of your deeds. And then you're hearing it. And then you hear about Teldrassil. And me as a player, I'm like, I didn't even do Teldrassil, bro. I wasn't even there for that. I'm in Zandalar chilling in the mountains. That had nothing to do with that. And they're talking about Teldrassil. You just see Yasira's face just change it's just like bruh and i'm like listen i wasn't with them all right I wasn't me. It, it made it a it it's a fun campaign it's a it's, it's a fun place it's a fun company uh, yeah. uh she she makes it good her story the characters in there yeah sorry i dabbed off onto that i just enjoy shadow <laughs> no that's good that's good you know uh, again it, it's it's good that a game can can give you all those those feelings and thoughts really so if there was a character, hypothetically speaking, you have the power yeah. now. So if there was a character who is in the Shadowlands now because they perished in uh, Azeroth, and you could send them back to Azeroth from the Shadowlands, who would it be Zul'jin. and why? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Zul'jin. Because <laughs> I understand that the elves needed a home. I, I get that. And I understand the Amani could have... I've seen this in a meme, actually. It was a Game of Thrones meme with uh, with Braun and um, um, Peter Dinklage. Uh, uh, forget forget what his character's name is. Um, <laughs> they said, by the light, Amani. <laughs> you know, uh, by the light, Amani, why didn't you just speak with the, uh, with the Blood Elves first? And, you know, the Amani were just like, because there's no excuse for being dicks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, this it's like they moved in on our territory. You know, they moved in our, on our land and stuff. Because I have a dream that I want to troll. Blizzard does trolls so dirty. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm tired of every expansion going to a dungeon array, killing. I'm tired. Can I, like, like can we kill something else for a change? I want the Troll Empire to rise back. I eventually want Zul'jin to maybe... I know he probably will never, ever see, like, maybe, maybe the Horde may be on to something. But I at least want that chance for him to see how Zandalar is working. And how to see how Zandalar basically low-key kind of brought all tribes united after Rastakhan's death. Kind of back together trying to put everybody on a pedestal and realizing the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I want Zul'jin to come back. I, he, he, he should. If not should, he needs to get redeemed. 
<laughs> at least redeem. But I would 100% bring Zulja back. I don't think he deserves to be there. I'm glad they had that little Easter egg of him. And he said, I want you to do it here. How about y'all had enough for messing with me, man? I'm like, nah, uncle, I want you to come home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we bored out here <laughs> trying to do troll activities. <laughs> Okay, okay. So what if it was the other way around? You have uh, a character running around in uh, Azeroth, uh, very happy, alive, and you're like, no, you're going to the Shadowlands now. Um, Who would it be, and where would you drop them permanently in the Shadowlands? Who? Um... Who? Let's see. That's a... Who? That's a broad one. Um... Ah... There is several. There's several that come to mind. Ah, uh, oh man, I'm trying to. <laughs> it's such a hard question because it's like it's a lot of people. Some of y'all need to be in here. Why well, about people need to be in here? Um, Tyrallian. Okay, how come? After reading Shadows Rising, and spoiler alert for anybody who didn't read the book because it's it's amazing mm-hmm. um reading shadows rising and seeing how he conducted that interrogation mm-hmm. and the fact that i just there's something that even even, even during the legion like this is something just breathes off about Toronto. there's this it's just mm-hmm. something that's just telling me this this there's nothing there's something that's not right with this old man <laughs> like i feel like he's like we all know how life fanatics usually are you mm-hmm. know to understand i i you know i get void fanatics and stuff but life fanatics you know not even to attribute it and to real life stuff but you know when some people get very cult heavy about a certain thing to the point where they have to push that agenda on everything and that's low-key what i feel like he's doing and because of that, I think he needs to go before some horrible shit happens. He, he like get Taralian out of here. Like get him, leave him, take him home. I would say Jaina, she's already there. Take Taralian with you. That, that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I definitely see where you're coming from with that. Okay, so let's jump into faction pride. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, it, it's a bit of a loaded question, but I, I do feel like we're at this point now in the expansion and uh, the cycle of expansions that we've had, that faction becomes a bit of a, a, a weird issue. Um, so mm-hmm. at the moment in Shadowlands, it really doesn't matter if you're Horde or Alliance because, um, you know, it's it's nothing. It's yeah, it, it's, it's really it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore. It's not part of the story. Um, but we've always had these things in the past that was Horde versus Alliance. Oh, we need to fight something bigger. So we are teaming up now and then we've killed the big bad. And now someone did some, somebody dirty. We're at war again. And that's how it continued. Um, where do you stand at this point with the factions? Do you feel like it just needs, we need to get rid of Horde versus Alliance? Or should we have Horde uh, and Alliance, but maybe a third faction that is either neutral or uh, hyper-aggressive to both, so another versus uh, faction, or do you feel like now it needs to stay where it was, you know, Horde versus Alliance, if it's red, it's dead. Where do you stand? I... Preferably... I I want... I still want faction war to be a thing. Because BFA, mm-hmm. BFA really touched on it, and how we have a lot of differences. Because I don't think World of Warcraft is at the point now where we need to be on a unified, on a unified uh, relations. Shadowlands is great because we're still enemies. It, it, it does a great deal of showing that too when you do the opening quest. How mm-hmm. both sides of the Alliance and the Horde are still ready to war off against each other because they're still angry about the things that go on. And now Bobars tell us we basically have to set aside these differences for now because they're bigger things to attend because, you know, we're gods going to a godly place doing godly things. But, Mm -hmm. you know, in a way, I wish you would would be like faction war is a thing, but there are neutral people. Mm -hmm. You got to think about, you know, 
at least in the wild state point, not that this shit, not that this shit matters at all, but just think about it because it does provide an influence. You know, merchants, traders, you know, small bits of neutral people that actually do neutral things because they don't want to be divided into a war, so they want to break off and do among other things besides being a part of the war that they feel like they should be a part of. Mm-hmm. You know, although it's influencing everybody and everybody's just fighting for this like land and place or whatever, I could definitely see a third set faction happening. And even then, even if it's not like a faction that physically altercates with both sides, it's just a side that's at least neutral for people who don't want to be preferred in the side or whatever. They just want to continue just living their life, trying to make, you know, day to day ends meet, doing basic survival, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think the faction war needs to continue, at least until it gets to a, a, a strong point. You know, it's like it's like when you it's like a movie. And you mm-hmm. show that loaded gun. You know, that loaded gun is eventually going to go off in that movie. You know, this war, one side has to win. One side mm-hmm. is going to win. You know, it may not be the way we want it. It may be the way we want it. But that's the only way things are going to have to change. The only, Like, uniting only works for so much when there's still so many things to be answered for. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just... Like, I don't expect Tyrande to just go through Shadowlands. We save a couple of Night Elves, you know, burn victims, save a couple of their souls or whatever. I don't expect Tyrande to just be all like, all right, yeah, we're cool now. You save some people that you killed. Yeah, no, nah, we're good. We're even. No, nah, we're, we're totally neutral. I don't expect that shit. If anything, I expect her to break off from the Alliance. Mm-hmm. We, like, rally up her people and say Alliance is unfit to be allies because they don't understand our pain and suffering. The horde is unfit to even live on this planet because they have no fucking compassion and no moral. Like we kill them both. Mm-hmm. Like, like in a way, almost in a way, I kind of wish people would go back. Everybody would just go back to being their own individual thing. Orcs would go back to just focusing on orcs. Trolls would go back to focusing on trolls. You know, and then make wars that way. Different tribes. You know different tribes like orcs and trolls might have beef over something or you know the humans and the Volpera might be fighting over some shit I don't know what probably alpacas or something but you know something different that at least will bring a little bit more to the game before it gets to an end point because once you get to that end point there's there's technically nothing left like like with Elder Scrolls at first I like what they did but then I'm like there's really nothing there's really nothing left of this because you can quest with people from different sides, you know, but then once you do PVP, you're pretty much locked to that side. So if, like I said, if, if they actually had it to where we could all do stuff, but, but still be in our certain factions, I'll, I'll be all for it. Even if this was like a certain phase, like we phase in to do certain things. Like they got it in PVP where you can basically like low key work for the other side undercover as an undercover agent doing certain stuff you know there's nothing wrong with making at least make if anything make more places like Gadgetan. make Mm -hmm. more neutral zones for people to make a neutral hub that's what people want because most people at least from role players perspective from not people that you know they do other things in the game they just enjoy playing it but like there should be a neutral hub where people can gather from mm-hmm. both sides and you know and do stuff and, 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 it's, and it's, it's, it's as it is it's a neutral place it'd be nice and then when they go outside of doing whatever what else you know you back to business as usual you know red is true whatever well that's blue is true red is <laughs> red is dead the other side is dead whatever red matters I'm a horde loyalist blame it on the boogie so <laughs> so at least something like that you know mm-hmm. yeah I, you know, I think that's also one of those reasons why Dalaran was so popular back in the day because people shared the same city. I, f- I don't get that feeling with Oribos. So I don't know why, but you know, I, I don't either. It's because it's a it's it's because it's purgatory. We're forced there. You know, yeah, it feels like Central Station. Like, well, we're, we're all waiting here for trains. And yeah, we're to all leave. waiting here for the trains to leave and do our thing. So, and of course, we're being watched by people. So, of course, we can't start anything. I, I don't, I don't like that. No, I don't like that. Like, hoping here's hoping that maybe in the future, while we get a place 
where we're new as adventurers. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to a new place where we're actually adventurers, you know, trying to integrate ourselves into that new world society rather than trying to get them to integrate into ours. Mm -hmm. You know, something that makes us feel a bit different to the point where we're in that society now. So we forget what we used to do. Yeah. You know, it, it'd be it'd be real nice. But and I, I just, you know, I don't agree with people that go hardcore. Like I'm a meme. I'm a troll. You know, I can be a degenerate sometimes. You know, I claim hoard all day, but I have Alliance friends, too. You know, they matter, too. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to I'm not just going to like off film and say, oh, you didn't choose the right side or da 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 I'm not going to do that shit. If anything, I look to it as a challenge because I have a rival. <laughs> like we make it a competitive play, you know. So I got somebody at least compete. I got a reason to get better in the game because mm -hmm. I don't want no alliance person to surpass me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's it's friendly rivalry. It should be friendly rivalry, not like raging warfare over social media about who's better than who, what area is better than what, what deserves to get burned, what didn't, what person didn't deserve to die, all this and all that. Fuck all that, man. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the game with your friends. Because everybody's playing the game because they enjoy playing the game. Let it be for that reason alone. That's a very, very good way of saying it. Also, I'm very curious because this leads into my next question. Yeah. But what has, and it could be quite personal way, but what has the Warcraft community meant to you? And it could be either in game or outside of the game. Um. <laughs> There are bad players everywhere. Let's let's, mm. let's 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 be let's be real. So let's be real, audience. Let's be real, everybody. There are bad players everywhere. Don't let those bad players knock you from an experienced game. Trade chat, whatever chat, general chat. We all know nothing civilized goes on in there. Just don't go in there. <laughs> if you get triggered by it, turn it off. So um, the community. I've met some amazing players. I met some dick players. I met mm -hmm. some blatantly out there racist players. I met players who don't care whether it be on the game or the forums or Twitter. And I love the community. I know there's bad apples in there. It, it is. We have bad apples in real life. It doesn't mean that I can't love something. You know, I, I love the community. They're very welcoming. I've met amazing people from all races, gender, spectrums, like everything. I've, it's, it's amazing people, especially in the Twitter Roth community on Twitter. People are very, very friendly, very opening, very welcoming. You know, it's the fan base. They, they love to talk, bounce ideas, get it. There can be drama because people don't necessarily agree with people. And that's OK, because not everybody is obligated to like your opinion. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, I play devil's advocate. I hate to say that sometimes because, I, you know, sometimes we feel like there is the only right opinion on this. Like, but at the same time, you're not obligated to like how I feel or like what I say and stuff like that. I'm not mm -hmm. obligated to do the same about you. And that that's OK, you know, but at least we're talking about the game. So at one point, the game at least brings us together on that note. <laughs> that's you know, very true and at least it brings us together now we're, at least we all have something we're very passionate about in this game no matter how big or how small it is it's something about this game that draws us all together and you meet amazing people on there regardless of what community you're in or what faction you play or what race you play or if you're meta or not meta people in here will be friendly to you and will open up to you and i and i just love it i, I love it <laughs> good that's good to hear well sorry yeah, yeah. despite like so many technical difficulties <laughs> we have made it to the end of the of the interview i have one more question for you and that is the question what is your whisper for those of you who are new and are listening to this podcast for the first time a whisper can be anything really it can be uh, a wish that you might have for in the game uh, any game mechanics you want implemented or taken out, or maybe a bit of fear crafting about the story, basically anything. So, Zari, what would be your whisper? And you don't have to whisper it, by the way. Okay, because I was prepared, <laughs> but that's good. Um, I wish for after Shadowlands for World of Warcraft to have a world revamp, a reboot. 
mm-hmm. not necessarily to say start over, retcon everything, but reintroduce the game in a new way to where it makes even the oldest of players feel like it was their first time logging in the game. I think that's what people people really want a refresher and with updates. Mm-hmm. Not just a refresher with just recycled skins, recycled moves, an update because they want to be able, like like we had talked about earlier, that should be able to reflect on the game. Mm-hmm. Things that happen, I want to see that happen. So when this game is out and new people are playing this game, and they'd be like, oh, wow, man, why does that place look like that? All you have to say is you just have to be there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, 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 that is my, that, and if I can be greedy, green skin for troll players and beards <laughs> beards green skin golden eyes for the zandalari and blue tattoos i want those throne of thunder tattoos that's my <laughs> good i am fully backing all of that um but yeah no thank you so much for this interview i had you. a real blast a- again despite all the technicalities of our people who are listening you're like what what the hell is ha-? we had like five or six disconnects with Squadcast, <laughs> so it, like it, 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 it's okay shit happens it's all right they didn't want to let me shine but we still went through it anyway we, we persevere that's what we do um but yeah at least you know i i had fun on the interview despite all the the, the constantly <laughs> starting over um so yeah i it was wonderful talking to you uh, if people want to follow you where can they find you on the internet Yes, you guys want to follow me? Um, follow me on Twitter at Trollazari. That's T R O W L A Z A R I. If um, you're interested in reading some of the poetry or seeing some of the stuff on Wattpad and Instagram, it's S E N S E I dot D K O N. Instagram might be a little bit inactive because you know I don't I don't do stuff much more, but I got stuff on there if you ever want to read it, get influenced. Um, I'm putting some stuff on my Twitter, too. I got a couple of poetry things on my Twitter. So come check it out. Come say hi to me. Um, tell me how we need Vengeance for Zildjian. And, and that's it. Thank you guys for having me as a guest. And thank you for having me on your podcast. I truly appreciate it. Uh, no, absolutely. A pleasure was mine. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. It was lovely talking to Alazari. And yeah. I, I, you know, make sure that you follow him on Twitter and everything else. I'll make sure that the links are posted as always. But let's talk a little bit about 9.1.5. So I was quite surprised. I don't know if you guys were, but I was quite surprised that that's coming out in November. uh, So quickly. And I'm actually looking forward to it. I know that a lot of people are very much in the negative uh, at the moment. I'm, you know, and I, I feel like you can be unhappy with playing WoW at the moment. You know, I know I've had my moments that I'm like, Shadowlands is not my thing. I'm not entirely enjoying it. I'm still sub to it and I still play. Um, But it's not as fun as it was for me with certain things. And I think it's just, I don't think it's so much the game. I think it's just the expansion. It just doesn't resonate with me. And that's fine. You know, for other people, they have quit completely and they've gone to other games, which is also fine. Uh, I think, you know, you need to do what you want with your time. Time is precious, uh, as is your money, (laughs) especially for a sub. And there are other people who absolutely still love everything about this game and are having tons of fun. And there, again, there's nothing wrong with any of that you know if you decide to stop to play because it's just not your game anymore or you really really can't um stand uh the company i get that i i really do but i always find it a little bit sad when some people are really enthusiastic about a new patch like 9.1.5 that's coming out just to you know it's it's something new It, it might not be the patch that you are hoping for it might not have new dungeons or new this or that But it might have something for the other people that are looking forward to that. And to basically shit on people's parade, I think, is a little bit sad. I I don't understand why people do that. Uh, If it's not for you, it's not for you. It's the same as, you know, you don't 
you don't even play World of Warcraft anymore yet. Every time there's something new coming out, you go like, oh, I'm so happy I quit this game uh, for like 10 years ago. And I'm like, wow, that's a long time. And you're still checking up on the news? Why? It's, you know, I don't get that. Um, I think it's a little bit sad when <laughs> you try to just be so negative on the internet. I'm sure you have better things to do than try and shit on other people's uh, enjoyment of something. So... That's where I stand. I'm I'm looking forward to 9.1.5. I just, you know, want to see what happens. Um, I don't know if it will change that much in the gameplay for me, but it's something. It's something new, which is always good. I'm always uh, up for new things. It's going to be a very busy month for me, though, um, to be honest, because uh, 1st of November is my birthday, in which I get even older, but I've decided not to count back. Uh, I think that's a much better plan than counting upwards. We're counting downwards now. Um, and then, I'm not going to lie, I'm also back into Animal Crossing because I uh, am very looking forward to the new update that we're getting in DLC. So that is going to take a lot of my time. And then, of course, we get 9.1.5. So <laughs> I'm going to be super busy. Which is not a bad thing. I'd rather have too much stuff to choose from than that I'm really struggling to find something to play. And we are not going to look at my to be played list of my library in Steam. Um, because I, I should have something to play really uh, every day. But yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to, to November. It's, it seems like there's a lot of cool stuff happening and of course Hallow's End is, is happening I'm really enjoying that just doing that on a few characters especially lobbies it, you know even if you don't really want to level them just yet do that once a day and it will give you a chunk of a level uh, if you're very low and if not you know you get some free stuff you can you can go and loot the pumpkins in the inns I just love Halloween time like uh, end of October uh, November is my favorite time of the year so i'm having a great time and i hope that you guys have a great time as well whether that's in world of warcraft or not um, but if you want to find out some more stuff then of course you can find that in the following links go to whispersofwar.podbean.com if you want to find the show notes where to find the guests and other links that i'm giving you now just in case you're too lazy to write it down uh, go to discord.io forward slash whispers of war if you want to join the discord twitter at whispers underscore of underscore war uh, my personal one is at mcmonkeys that's mc monkeys with a z feel free to join me i know it's um private but that's only because i scan who can join me so if you're a gamer and and if you're into world of warcraft or any other games you know or a geek or nerd then i would probably add you anyway it's more to get rid of spam accounts or uh, creeper accounts or people I might know from work and stuff like that so it's just to keep that separate um, email whispersofwarpodcast at gmail.com and twitch is twitch.tv forward slash mcmonkeys mc monkeys with two z's this time or two z's depending on where you're from um, I am going to stream I'm just setting up my stream deck. I need to figure out a few things because things have changed a little bit since I last streamed a few months ago. And I haven't figured out how to do certain things uh, just yet. One is against, you know, the hate rates. Not that I think I'll get them that quick because I'm far too small for that. But you have to be prepared, I think, just in case. You know, don't let the assholes win. So I need to look into that a little bit. And then, yeah, hopefully uh, maybe we'll have a birthday stream. That, that might happen. So yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful time, whatever you're doing, and enjoying a bit of the autumn weather. I know rain, but you know, it's still nice. I think it's nice autumn. And I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.